Hi, everyone. Welcome back. So we're going to jump into Chapter 7, Quantifying Movement, and we're all going to aspire to be as happy as this elephant looks here. So here's the agenda for the upcoming lectures. Uh, we're going to start off by asking why quantify movement. I'll just briefly discuss some of the things we can do by assigning numbers to what we'd observe every day in human movement. We'll look at sensing technology. We'll focus on optical motion capture and force plates. These are the most common modalities for uh, quantifying movement. We'll also talk briefly about markerless motion capture. It's becoming very popular with inertial measurement units and other uh, strategies. Then we'll look at inverse kinematics calculations. Uh, so the specifics of how we do the uh, linear algebra and define reference frames and all that. So why do we want to quantify movement? Well, one reason is we can generate four dynamic simulations. And this is one way of putting numbers to uh, what we observe in, in uh, in nature. Another reason is to perform inverse dynamic analyses. So you could imagine bringing someone into the lab, you'd record them moving around, uh, you'll get some trajectories of points that were uh, attached to the skin. So these markers are moving through space and over time as a person moves. And we want to know what was the skeleton doing. Um, the reason we want to know what the skeleton was doing, well there are some good reasons to know joint angles on their own. But we also need that information if we want to compute joint moments and ultimately muscle forces. Muscle forces, of course, uh, will tell us information like metabolic cost. The reason we need to know where the skeleton is to compute muscle forces, you'll remember that muscles attach to bones, ultimately. And the amount of force that a muscle can generate depends on the length of the fibers. So we need to know what's the length of the path. The muscle path length depends on where the skeleton is. So that's how all this is related. Specifically, we're focusing on inverse kinematics. So we have, again, trajectories of points on the skin as they move through space and over time. And we want to compute skeletal joint angles. Here's one example of what we can do just with skeletal joint angles. So this was a study to look at um, anterior cruciate ligament injury risk, or uh, the risk of injuring your ACL. The ACL is a ligament that prevents your tibia from moving forward relative to your femur. And depending how you land, you might put more or less stress on the ACL. Uh, so here's a risky sort of landing pose. Here's a safer pose. The plots on the left, the, the top plot shows a knee flexion angle um, in degrees over the landing phase. And you'll notice that the two strategies look roughly the same in terms of knee flexion angle. The knee valgus angles are quite different, though. And the knee valgus angle is, uh, has a big uh, impact on uh, the, the stresses on the ACL. And you can actually train athletes to land in a particular way, thereby reducing injury risk of the ACL. Another strategy to collect kinematics is by doing X-ray fluoroscopy. And with this modality, we're actually tracking the bones themselves. So you'll see in this video here, uh, you can see the bones. This is uh, during a landing. Here's the knee. Um, and you'll notice a couple things in this video. We can track the bones directly. Uh, you'll also notice, here's a marker on the skin. Uh, you can notice when the person lands, the marker moves around quite a bit. In fact, that's something we'll talk about a little bit later, but this is, in fact, quite a big issue in marker-based motion capture, the relative motion between the skin and the underlying bone, which is what we want to track. X-ray fluoroscopy might look like a pretty good strategy, and it is uh, quite good. We get good data. Uh, one issue is that it exposes the subject to uh, radiation, which is not always desirable. And uh, there's also a relatively small field of view, which can be an issue with some, with some experiments. Okay, great. So in the next video, we're going to start off looking at optical motion capture.